We now know what a function is, so we're going to look at combinations of functions. Now we're going to spend two videos on that. In this first video, we're simply going to look at the sum, the difference, the product, and the quotient of functions. In the next video, we're going to be looking at the composition of functions, which is a little bit stranger and should be a new concept for some of you. So the definitions for adding, subtracting, multiplying, and dividing functions are very obvious, as we expect. The sum of two functions simply means add the two functions together. The difference, subtract them. The product, multiply them. The division of two functions, so one function divided by the other one, but we have to have the rider that my denominator then cannot be zero. So these are very acceptable definitions. They seem quite clear with our knowledge we have. So let's take a look at what this means with examples. So here we've got two functions. f maps x onto the root of x minus 2 and g maps x onto x squared minus 4. Now we're going to look at the combinations of the functions and their domains. So let's just get started to look at the domain of f. I'm putting a subscript there because now I've got two functions, f and g, so I want to distinguish them. The domain of f, I've got a root, so it must be numbers bigger than or equal to 2. So it's everything from 2 to infinity, and we're using interval notation here. You can use another notation if you prefer that. The domain of my function g, x squared minus 4x, it's all real numbers. I can square any real number and subtract four times that number from it. All right. So let's look at the sum function. What this is, it's just a f, f of x plus g of x. So it's the root of x minus 2 plus x squared minus 4x. We can't simplify it further. It's very simple. And the domain is just the intersection of the two domains. So that's everything from 2 to infinity. The difference function, square root of x minus 2 minus, now just take note, we'll need a bracket, x squared minus 4x, because we're subtracting the whole of g of x. So that's the root of x minus 2 minus x squared plus 4x. But the domain is again the intersection of the two domains, from 2 to infinity. The third one, the product function, we simply multiply the two, root of x minus 2 times x squared minus 4x, remember those brackets makes a difference, and again, my domain is the intersection of the two. So it sounds pretty boring every time, but the quotient function is the one that causes a bit of trouble. The quotient function will then be the root of x minus 2 over x squared minus 4x. Now, even though the domain of g of x, the domain of x squared minus 4x, we saw was all real numbers, all of a sudden, now that I've got a quotient function, We've got more things to look at. If I look at this denominator, x squared minus 4x, if I factorize it, it's x times x minus 4. We don't want that to be 0. So we need to now exclude more values from the domain. So the domain of the quotient function is not just the intersection of the two domains. It's not just from 2 to infinity. I want all numbers from 2 to infinity, but I, want, I need to exclude 0. But 0 is already excluded in the domain of f. But I'm also excluding the number 4. So what I have as a domain here is from 2 to 4, but I'm cutting out 4. And then again from 4 to infinity. So I'm cutting out 4. So take note when finding the domain of the quotient, you need to just give it another thought. You can't just write the intersection of the two domains. All right, we can ask different questions with the combinations of functions. I can ask for f plus g in a specific point. Well, that will then just be f of x plus g of x in that point. 2 minus 2 plus 2 squared minus 4 times 2. As simple as that. And that should give you the root of 2 minus 2 is the root of 0. That's very convenient. And then I've got 4 minus 8, which gives me minus 4. Then f minus g in the point minus 4. Now you need to stop because f is only defined for x is greater than or equal to 2. So f minus g is only defined for x is greater than or equal to 2. So if I look at x equal to minus 4, that is undefined. Don't try and force it. Don't try and change anything. There's just, it's not defined, the difference for the value x equal to minus 4. f times g in the point b. Now b is not a number, it's an unknown, but it's still treated the same way. It's the root of b minus 2 times, because it's the product function, b squared minus 4b. 
As simple as that. The quotient in the point 6, is 6 in the domain of the quotient? Yes, it is. We saw that on the previous slide. So we've got the root of 6 minus 2 divided by 6 squared minus 4 times 6. That gives me the root of 4, which is 2, over 36 minus 24. 36 minus 24 is 12. So it's 2 over 12, which is 1 over 6. So those are the kind of questions we can ask. So let's have, look at two more functions. f of x and g of x. x f is now a quotient function. So the domain of f is all the x's excluding 0. So it's all the x's given x is not equal to 0. And the rain domain of g is just all real numbers. All right. Now there's going to be some interesting ones, but the most of them are pretty boring. The sum, 1 over 2x plus 4x plus 5. And the domain of the sum is the intersection of the domains. It's all the x's as long as x is not equal to 0. The difference, 1 over 2x minus 4x plus 5, which you can simplify as minus 4x minus 5, and the domain is the same. Just remember those brackets. The product function, multiply the two, 1 over 2x times 4x plus 5, or if you want to write it a little bit neater, 4x plus 5 over 2x. Yet again, the domain is just the intersection of the two. Now we still get to the quotients. Now we've got to think. f over g, so I've got 1 over 2x divided by 4x plus 5. Now firstly, that is very untidy. We don't, want, don't like fractions on fractions. That's the same as 1 over 2x times 4x plus 5. So all of a sudden, I've got to exclude some more. I can't just exclude 0. This domain is all the x's as long as x is not equal to 0. But also, x can't be minus 5 over 4. Because that will make g of x naught, And that's the condition. g of x can't be 0. Now, this one I want you to pay attention to. g over f. I will have 4x plus 5 over f of x is 1 over 2x. Now we know if we simplify that, we get 4x plus 5 times 2x. Now, if I only look at this and I was given this end piece as a function, the domain would be all real numbers. I can substitute any real number into there. But because I've given specific functions, before I started, 0 was already excluded from my domain. Before I could do anything with f, 0 was excluded. So we can't now throw it back in. I can't say, okay, 0 was excluded, but now it's included. Because this is a domain of a very specific function, including g and f. So I need to exclude that 0. Even though, if we simply look at this with no other information, it looks like it's defined for all real numbers. But actually, this quotient function is not defined where x is equal to 0, because f is not defined there. So that's how they work. In the next video, we're going to look at the composition of functions. So that's another way to combine functions. And that one will take a little bit more work.